saying, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm looking at the new warthog at the Dallas Zoo. The new what? Warthog. He's like this big. Warthog? The stupid Dallas Morning News wants me to pay a dollar to see the picture. I'm not doing it. That's a cool backpack you have over there. What is that? It's the new Orvis. Uh, it's for fly fishing. So I can Whoa. wear it when I'm fly fishing. I've got my net here. It's got all these lovely pack. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're doing a great job of, yeah. of demonstrating this. Why is there a net hanging off of that bag? Well, because it's magnetic, see? So if I'm in the water and uh, I think I've got to have it over like this and I'm doing my fishing and then, oh, I got a fish. So then, except, except it's you don't use that side. hand because you have the so fish in your I got hand. the fish, so I have to rip it this way and it pops off. And then I can scoop up my fish. Well, probably like this because I have it like here. So scoop up my fish out of the river and handle that and I can let it go and it won't float away because it's attached and then when I'm done I just I'm supposed to stick it back here somewhere and it's supposed to reattach but I haven't mastered it yet. Is it possible that you have not mastered this because that's not in fact your bag and you have no idea what you're talking about? <laughs> she did a pretty good oh, job. Look at that. It. She did a pretty good job because this gives you an idea of how much I talk about the shit that I buy in this house because she was able to accurately describe everything on that pack that I just received like a week ago. Also, this is for your tipper. <laughs> and your what? Is that right? Tippet? Tippet. Tippet. This is for your tippet line. And you can have all different sizes. So you can have a whole bunch of spools on here. And you just, um, there's this way you can pull it off. And then you can add to it or change whatever. So what is the but tippet? Then it's like the end of the line um, for when you're <laughs> fly fishing. Um, you put this, it's like a leader on the end of the line. It's the leader or it's the tippet? It's the tippet <laughs> leader. <laughs> the tippet, <laughs> yeah. What's the, advantage I mean, just, of, what's the advantage of having different sizes of tippet? Well, because you got different weights of fish. Different weights of fish, that's right. Different <laughs> sizes of fish. <laughs> yeah, so you need thicker, heavier tippet. That's what she said. For <laughs> thicker, heavier fish. <laughs> Thicker tippet for bigger fish. That sounds yeah. like a, okay. Yeah, that's a lot. All right, what, do you, what is this bed? What is this? this? This is a strange setup here. This is the Mike's angry at me bed. It's the Mike's angry at me bed. Mm -hmm. So when he's really angry at me or I'm snoring really badly, he can come in his office and sleep on this bed. That's right. It, mostly it's the, I'm sitting here so I can be close to Mike while he's on his computer bed. Yeah, so this room's a mess, but this is where I spend the majority of my day um, at that uh, desk right there. And then she comes in here. At every moment because I'm lonely. See, for all of you that are like, oh my God, I can't believe she puts up with this guy. He's such a piece of shit. Meanwhile, she follows me around the house like a lost puppy dog. Stockholm Syndrome? <laughs> yes, she has Stockholm Syndrome. All right. Also, the kids don't hang out in here, so sometimes... <laughs> oh, so you're just here to escape the kids. Wow, <laughs> see? Everybody needs a little escape, and you have your whole own room, and I don't. Yeah, so I'm about to get to work on cleaning up another room of the house. Sure you are. <laughs> she, ye of little faith. I'm about to get to work cleaning up another room of the house so that I can have a designated spot through those curtains over there to make high quality YouTube videos for all of you guys. So stay tuned for that. What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that little intro video. I'm trying to diversify my content a little bit. I've been planning on shooting some different types of videos, and so I've been just uh, experimenting with the camera a little bit around the house. Uh, but nevertheless, what we're talking about today is Sarah's um, steroid before and after uh, pictures. There's going to be if I get away with it, some rather racy pictures in this, uh, at least one rather racy picture in this uh, particular video. So you might not wanna have the kids in here for this, but basically what I wanna show you guys is what Sarah was able to, to do with her body uh, with the help of little Anivar. So uh, one of the things I find out more and more on a regular basis is that a lot of guys are not attracted to women with any type of musculature in their bodies at all. And they're very afraid that their girls are gonna become too masculine or too manly. So one of the points that I wanna to try to drive home in this video is that it's really quite difficult in my estimation for a girl to become 
too muscular. Now, admittedly, I find the muscular female form to be very attractive. Uh, I think uh, Valerie Rattel is a women's figure athlete, I believe. I, I really am very preferential to the way the figure athletes look. The bikini girls are great, but uh, I actually really enjoy uh, the look of a woman with, a, with a, a, an appreciable amount of muscle on her frame. What I want to show you today is an example of uh, what, what some people might think is too much muscle, but then uh, connect that with what that particular type of physique actually looks like in otherwise very feminine clothing. So I'm going to show you some pictures of her back and her chest right after she got through lifting while she was on cycle. And you can see that for one, there's some acne involved in using hormones. And two, there's a, there's a very decent amount of muscle for, a, for an otherwise very skinny girl um, that you will see here. And so at first glance, I think some of you are going to go, oh, you know, I don't know that I would want my girl to be that big. But once you see it in dresses and, and bikinis and other things, I think that you will really grow to appreciate just how amazing a little bit of muscle on a woman can look. So uh, I'm going to bring up some pictures and then we'll kind of talk over them one by one as I go through them. So for, obviously for starters, we're going to get to, to the beginning shot. So again, one of the things I've tried to reiterate a number of times on this channel is that my wife and I are both by nature very, very skinny people. Um, when, when our kids go out of town or we have any time alone, we absolutely just quit eating. It's insane. I was 130 pounds at one point, 135 pounds at one point in our marriage, and my wife has been as low as about 100. She is 5 foot 10, 5 foot 9 and a half, and you are going to see exactly how unbelievably wraithly skinny a woman of that height at that body weight can look. So bear with me, because these are the, these, so we're gonna go through some of her, her beginner pictures. So this is before she was weight training or using uh, anabolics at all, and these first few images are pre-breast implants and pre-baby. So in this first image, you can see, um, she looks like a skeleton, honestly. Um, that fish that she's holding in her hand is a 14 inch white bass. And it is, <laughs> I mean, it looks like it might be able to eat her. You can see barely in that one arm that she's got tucked behind her back, she has, I mean, effectively no muscle on this frame. Very, very skinny. She's probably gonna kill me for, for, for telling you guys this, but one of the things that, that I thought was so interesting and, and rather odd when we first met was that her blue jeans would have these weird wear spots in the ass, like basically where her butt bones were, they would wear through her denim jeans. She has no ass at all. Uh, it's something that she struggles with even today. She just does not carry weight on her frame the way that most women do. And so uh, the, 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 it was very obvious that her bones would wear through her jeans. Um, and so there you see her holding a 14 inch white bass. Uh, in this picture, again, you get a very good indication. Now this is a substantially bigger fish. She's holding a hybrid here on the front of my Skeeter. Um, she is absolutely skin and bones. Pay attention to the, I mean, hang on a second, make sure my mic is on. Pay attention to the gap between her legs. I don't think this girl's uh, thighs touched at any point in her life, uh, maybe up until the last couple of years, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe when she was pregnant, but even then, I, I don't, I'm not so sure they ever touched. Um, and then here, one more, and actually we'll go to this image right here. Yeah, one more here. So again, uh, her holding a very tiny fish that she makes look rather large. You can see that there's basically a 90 degree angle to her shoulders because there's no tissue at all. It's just skin and bones. And so you have almost a right angle at her shoulders. And obviously it causes her face to look very sucked up. And um, you really see it in this picture. Her legs are absolutely minuscule. I don't know, uh, I don't think we ever measured back then. This is her hovering around 100 pounds. Um, in this next picture, uh, this picture is her post-breast implants and post-baby. 
So a lot of people think, oh, you have a baby, you're just gonna blow up, you're gonna get enormous. Clearly not. Uh, she was, I, I, our daughter I don't even think is a year old in this image. So this is already where her body has gotten back down to in its natural state plus the bolt-on enhancements that you see there. Still very, very lean. Obviously, she's carrying a little bit more body fat around her waist and her, her thighs that she's still shedding from the baby weight. But again, you see that near right angle in her shoulders and the arms are just like tubes. I mean, she's literally olive oil at this point. Um, so that is the beginner image. Uh, now I'm going to flash forward to some of the biggest images, that, some, of, some of the pictures we have of her are biggest. And I've had to break this video up once, so I can't remember if I, if I said this, but I'm showing these particular images to not only show um, the effects of the Anavar, but to, to contrast them with what she looked like in the gym with a pump, and then what she looks like with that same frame on the street in one of any number of dresses that I purchased for her. So in this first image here on your screen, you see the insane detail in her back. Uh, when she takes Anivar, it tends to cause a lot of acne. It's one of the very unfortunate things that she struggles with. A lot of people who use uh, anabolics struggle with acne. I, for some reason, am incredibly lucky, despite that I had it very bad when I was a kid. I get little to no acne. I'll get a spot or two here or there. Usually the spots that I get are like the cystic, you know, the big cystic acne, but um, it's, it's very minor in comparison. So you can see there's a lot of detail in her shoulders and her back. Um, her biceps are growing, her forearms, and, and this is what I was saying, like, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of guys out there who, while she's not a, she's not a big, big woman, there's a lot of guys out there who, who I think would look at this and go, oh, I don't, I don't know that I'd want my girl walking around town like that. Um, again, in this next image, she's being kind of goofy and hitting the, um, the, most muscular, the most muscular pose. And you can see there's, there's a masculine look to her face. Her shoulders have developed. Her biceps have developed. You can see pec separation in her chest. This is something that a lot of women try very hard not to have happen. Uh, I, I counseled her not to avoid doing chest workouts because I think that it's important for you to grow your body as evenly as possible. Obviously, the chest helps with the shoulders. The shoulders help with the chest. And I think that you're more likely to get injured if you're trying to lift heavy everywhere but your pecs. One of her big concerns was that she has her implants are, are under the muscle. And so she didn't want to have any negative effect on the implants and uh, the lifting alone does put a, a, an uncomfortable strain on them. But I counsel her to go ahead and develop her chest because of the fact that even when a woman develops her musculature, if she gets off hormones, it's not going to stay, this, it's not going to look the same. And if, if you grow too much of a body part, I think it's much easier to just sort of let it taper off than it is to just not have it at all. So you can see there's clear uh, pec separation. I have more pictures that I know she's not gonna let me put up. And um, there was a very pronounced amount of upper pec development. And I mean, you could, you could put a pencil in between her, her mid pecs or the, the, the middle part of her pecs. So this is what she looked like hormoned up. She was on 10 milligrams of Anivar at this time and a little bit of testosterone and she was hitting it hard and trying to get her calories in and this is what she looks like in the gym. Now, for that physique that some of you I think might, might feel is, is more than what you would really like to see on a woman, um, this is what her back looks like at that time in a dress. So you've got, again, you've got some Reasonable shoulder development, a lot of detail in the back. You can see the detail in the biceps and the shoulders and the forearms. Here in this next picture where she's got her shoulders pulled back, you can still see a lot of definition in her back. And again, in order to get these shots, I'm, 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 I'm having her pose in such a way as to bring these muscles out. If she was just walking down the street, you would not see this level of definition, although you would definitely be able to tell that she lifts. She was getting people coming up to her all the time, asking her if she was a trainer, asking her how, how she got this amazing physique. The, the response that she got from women was very positive when she was in this condition. Um, so that's what the back looks like. Here are some pictures, uh, let's see, in that same dress, you can again see 
I think this is one of my favorite pictures we ever took. I think there is very few things sexier on a woman than nice round shoulders and a really tight abdomen. You can see there's beautiful detail in her shoulders, her legs, her biceps. There's, it's very clear that she works out, but I, to my eye, I don't think she's in any way lost any of her femininity. Again, I get, I'm used to looking at girls that are substantially bigger than this, and I do not find them to be unattractive. Uh, Isa, Isa Pereira Nunez, Pereira Nunez, Isa Nunez is a um, wellness competitor. She's very, very, she's got a large amount of muscle on her frame. I find that to be very attractive. As I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it got cut. Uh, Valerie Rattel has a, has built a substantial amount of muscle on her frame and a lot of people find that to be very unattractive. I am not one of them. Um, in these next pictures, we'll just kind of scroll through some. Here's her back on the beach. Again, there's a lot of that detail that you saw in the gym picture, but without all of the harsh down lighting, it, and again, she's trying to make this look, you know, she's hitting this pose to bring out the muscles to a maximum. Um, then here is a, a more just relaxed shot. You can see her, her midsection looks good. You notice that you do not see the bulging pec development, although it is there. Her, her shoulders are always noticeable in no matter what picture you take. Uh, here's a little bit more of that bent over showing the, what a great job the doctor did with the bolt-ons. And uh, I love that picture too. Some of my favorite pictures are these here. Again, Showing the shoulders, that, that shoulder development with her long legs, uh, to me, this is the epitome of what a woman should look like. I don't understand, I, I have never understood when I, I post pictures of like Valerie, for example, I talked about it on Twitter the other day, and there's just one guy after another with the puking faces and disgusting comments and saying that she looks like a man, which is really hilarious. Girls, girls who build any amount of muscle on their frame always get told they look like men. Meanwhile, the overwhelming majority of men on this planet are fat, ugly, disgusting slobs. Most men on this planet would be so fucking lucky to look like any of these beautiful women. And so what I think it really comes down to is just insecurity. If you're a fat, slovenly, disgusting looking man, obviously you're going to be very ashamed of walking around town with a girl who is absolutely killing it in the gym, who looks like she's substantially and possibly is substantially more muscular than you are. But if you're a guy who trains a lot, who gives a shit about, what the, about the way he looks, who stays on top of a diet, who's counting calories, there is nothing better in this world, I can promise you, than having a girl who will lift with you, count calories with you, meal prep with you, cycle with you, because when you do all of those things together, not only does it bring you together closer as a couple, and in my case, I had my whole family in the gym. My son lifts, my daughter's up there hitting jumping jacks and squats and push-ups while we're all lifting with free weights. It becomes a family event and it really brought us together, it brought us closer together as a family. And so to me, there is, there is you, like, there's, no, there's nothing better in life than being able to share your passion with your wife and it, it allows you to understand each other on a much deeper level. She has a much greater understanding of what I go through when I'm cycling different, different anabolics because she's been through it herself. So a couple more pictures, I won't beat this to death. Um, this picture is another good one uh, where she's standing with that little, I don't know what you call that, but it shows her tricep development from that angle and her legs. Her legs were finally touching at this point. Um, she st when she started lifting, we talked about this in another video, when she started lifting um, prior to anabolics, she was struggling to uh, leg press the sled. I think her max was 700 pounds. Baby, did you get over 700 pounds? What was your max? I can't remember. Seven, I can't remember. 715, 7, 15, 730 pounds was her max leg press. That could give a lot of guys a run for their money. She had very, very strong legs, and yet she just still did not become this massive hulking woman. So to go back to the point that I was trying to make in the video, in the beginning of this video, there is really no reason for you guys to fear that your girl is just gonna blow up and get too big overnight. It takes a tremendous amount of work for a woman to put muscle on her frame, even in the presence of anabolics. And women more so than men are going to struggle to maintain anything they build because if when they come off, 
they're just not gonna have the androgen load to, to support it. My wife is actually getting ready to hit her first workout with me tonight. She's not been in the gym in three months or more. And so we're really eager to see how much of her muscle mass she was able to keep and how quickly whatever she did keep comes back when she gets back in the gym and starts lifting. I think she's probably also gonna get back on the on the Anivar again. And so it will not be, you know, we won't be able to know, you know, how quickly it comes back naturally. But nevertheless, it'll be interesting to see what she was able to maintain and what she was able to um, uh, what she's able to get back. So here are just a couple more pictures gonna run through. Um, again, nice, sexy, feminine picture, but you can clearly see that she's been lifting. You can see the shoulders and the tricep development there. And then uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, some of these were on our OnlyFans at one point uh, in some of the unedited versions. Again, to me, there is nothing on the planet more sexier than a woman with abs or with a woman that has a nice tight belly. Those two lines on either side of her abs with the two channels down the center around her navel, to me, that is, this is the way every woman on the planet should look. I do not understand these guys that love the big fat ass and the thunder thighs. Like I just, you know, obviously to each his own, I do not get that. I have always liked my girls either too skinny or nice and toned and fit. Um, and then if you see this picture that I talked her into letting me put it up, if it's not in the video, then I got shut down and you guys will have to get in the comment section and beg and plead for her for me to be able to post it. But this picture is obviously heavy, heavily edited and if there are children in the room, they probably should not be. This, this was definitely one of the pictures that we had on our OnlyFans for a period of time and I've edited it so that it can be on, um, on YouTube. So. The purpose of showing this picture is because uh, clearly besides the, the, um, the sticker, she's totally naked and you can see just how beautiful a woman's naked body can look with just a little bit of muscle. I, to me, this is not a lot of muscle. Somebody in the comments is going to tell me I'm crazy, but you can see, I love the way you see the lines of her biceps and how they cut into the upper pec development. And then you can see four nicely developed abs, uh, some obliques. The ribs are just barely showing, but she doesn't look bony and emaciated. And then the nice quad development where the quad sweeps out around the knees. To me, I mean, this is, this is what it's about, guys. There is nothing in the world like getting bed, getting in bed next to a woman whose, whose muscles are tight and full and firm. Again, I know a lot of guys like that soft, big round butt. To me, I would I, one of my favorite things in the bedroom is feeling her shoulders, her traps, and her back. And I know there's gonna be somebody in the fucking comments who's gonna be like, oh, well, clearly you're Clearly you're gay. I probably have to bloop that up. Clearly you're gay. You know, you like muscles. Again, I do not understand what is wrong with some of you people. Men and women both have muscles. There is nothing about muscles that is male or female. If there's ever been anything in the world that should unite the sexes, it's that we all are dependent upon muscles to exist. We would not be able to move our skeletons around if we didn't have muscle. I understand that there's a point with a woman's body and, and a lot of the, 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 the pro open class bodybuilders obviously lose a lot of their femininity. To me, the biggest thing that goes is the face. It, it's, it seems very difficult for a woman to maintain a truly feminine face and put on a large amount of muscle. I, it doesn't, the, the, the voice changes don't bother me. The clitoral changes don't bother me. Not, basically, none of the things that happens to a woman's body other than unfortunately that they do lose femininity in their face but I, I just don't understand why it is such a big deal for so many guys that seem to think that either a uh, women are disgusting looking if they have muscles on their frame and b that a guy who enjoys that must be gay i, I just I, I can't i cannot understand that at all i would really like to see what you guys have to say in the comments about this obviously i'm showing you pictures of my wife so if you don't like it 
please be kind. You can just say, hey, that's not for me. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't mind when you guys bash on me a million times, but I, I'm not gonna allow that, you know, any, any disgusting comments about my wife. But if you, if, if you don't like muscular women, if you think this is more muscle than you would wanna have on your frame, I think she and I would both like to hear your opinions. Let's just keep it reasonable and decent. Um, and then there'll be more content like this to follow. So hopefully, as always, this has been informative and you guys have enjoyed uh, looking at some of these pictures. If I was able to put them all up, uh, again, I'd like to reiterate, if you haven't seen one of my previous videos, we are not doing uh, OnlyFans anymore. We are not doing nude content of any kind. The OnlyFans page is still up, just in case we decide to change our minds at the end, you know, some point in the future. I think it's unlikely that's going to happen. It is set at $40, and every month I have somebody, despite the fact that there is a clear warning that there is no porn on this page, about once a month, somebody pays $40 to see pictures of me fly fishing. So definitely don't do that unless you just are trying to support the channel. And if that's the case, I really appreciate it. But you could always just put a tip on this video instead of rather <laughs> subscribing to an OnlyFans is going to get you nothing. Uh, but that all being said, as always, I got the Trimbalone shirt on for the gains. Don't do anything stupid. Protect the cycle. And we'll see you on the next one.